So I usually do something at the beginning of every year where I try to reevaluate myself, see what I've learned so far and what I've unlearned. So I sent a message to all my family members and my best friends and I asked them, what's that one thing you can confidently ask me questions about? And every single person talked about finances. <laughs> It was amazing to me that this is a recurrent part of my life because I know that I have made some very big mistakes in my life, especially in my 20s. I'm um, on a side note, I'm still in my 20s, but I'm more in my late 20s very late 20s <laughs> but i believe that these are things that you can learn if you're younger than me or if you're older than me you can also learn because we are all learning so yeah so we're going to be talking about the seven worst mistakes i made in my 20s let's get straight into it Hey guys what's up my name is victoria if you're new here welcome 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 now on this channel we talk about all things money talk girl talk and self-development and of course we're in a journey to living our best lives and if you want to go on that journey with us don't forget to smash that subscribe button and join this family give me a thumbs up if you find value from this video and also leave your comments down below let me know what you think or if you have any questions i'm going to be very practical this is like like a very true to life kind of story this isn't like a random tutorial or a to-do list or a listicle or something like that this is real life okay i love my 20s i think this has been the most um explorative years of my life and it's amazing and i think it's the best thing to do in your 20s this is that time when you can try new things do new things and get away with it but um, i believe it's also a time where you should take valuable lessons and put that into your more advanced years you know the riskier years when you really don't want to be making stupid mistakes one of the first mistakes i really made was not being accountable for my finances i kid you not one of the most scary things for me right now even right now is documenting my finances i really did not think it was essential to know how money comes in or goes out of your pocket i just felt like you know if you have money you spend the money right <laughs> you only live once but um it can burn you much later it's very 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 important that you understand what is happening with your finances i learned this much later in life i started documenting every single money every single money i'm not even trying to exaggerate every single amount that leaves my pocket that leaves my accounts cash credit whatever it is i document it and i think it's really an eye opener because you start to see where your money is really going you know sometimes we just get broke and we're like ah, where did my money go to all of a sudden but if you really document your finances you start to know where your money is going and that way you can know what to really curtail or if there's something you really need to work on at the early stages of me documenting my finances i found out that i was using a lot of data a lot of data and, I, and as of that time i wasn't even doing like anything digital like i'm doing now like i wasn't working from home or anything so i was it was basically just like social media videos and all of that but then as i started documenting my finances i knew i really loved to like do research and do all of those things so i started to make sure that there was something i was doing that was paying for that amount of data that i was using also one other thing i do to document my finances is that i use an app this isn't sponsored or anything i wish it was but i use an app called money manager i think the amazing thing about documenting your finances is that subconsciously over time you start to get conscious of the fact that you're going to record this thing so if it's not necessary you probably won't spend money on it right the second mistake I made was not saving a portion of my paycheck. For me, it was slightly different and I would like to use this as an excuse, but it's really not an excuse. Personally, I've always been an entrepreneur. I have never done a nine to five. So I really did not know first the principle of paying yourself first. So as of the early, as of my early twenties, I used to mix my finances, you know, Whatever I earn is also my money. I did not know how to separate my business money from my personal money. That's not the case. And that's probably another video for another day. But over time, I have learned to save a portion 
first before even doing any other thing so once i get a good amount of money even if it's a gift or a side hustle that i'm doing i just first of all take a portion out of it for savings personally i'm trying to catch up now with the savings thing so i don't do the regular savings i'm kind of crazy right now on my savings but i heard that a regular amount you can choose to start with is about 20 percent but if you're like me and you're trying to catch up catch up literally catch up on your finances you probably want to do about 40 to 50 percent or even crazier but always make sure that you're also considering other expenses that you'll be making over the month before doing that so that you don't get tempted to start touching your savings now the third mistake i also made was buying things i didn't really need don't get it twisted it's good to buy things that you love especially now that you're young because probably by the time responsibility is setting it might be harder to buy those things especially if your income is not moving as fast as how life is taking you i got my first human hair when i was not even making up to the money that i spent on that hair and it's funny because that hair got missing it got missing and i can't find i don't know so if, if you took that hair and, and you're watching this video know that it hurt me really because i, I didn't i didn't even finish paying for it okay you know that feeling right <laughs> most times you buy things that you really don't need you buy things that at that point it's not really necessary or these are luxuries that you cannot truly truly afford if you're a very very luxurious kind of person and you really love luxury then you can start planning towards those kind of luxury but spending your entire money on something that is just temporal something that you probably wouldn't use in two years or three years as far as things are material they actually depreciate with time so it's much, much, much advisable to rather invest in stuff than going into luxurious things, especially when you cannot afford them at that time. Now, the fourth mistake I made in my 20s was not having an emergency fund. And I think for me, it was more like the idea of having an emergency. Like, who wants to have an emergency in this life? God forbid. God forbid, Batson. It will never happen to me in Jesus' name. <laughs> but you have to have an emergency fund emergency can be anything anything and life truly does happen it happens when we least expect it i learned things the hard way and um, for me my emergency was actually when i had my first child when i had my first child i didn't realize that i would be out of work during the first few months it's always good as a woman to have your own money married or not single or married you should have your own money that's a responsibility you owe to yourself it doesn't matter if you have someone who is super supportive or you have parents who are paying your every bill there's just this confidence that comes from knowing that this is my money and i can do what i want to do with my money this also leads me to the next mistake i made which was not planning for big expenses if you're a subscriber on my channel you already know i love to talk about weddings all the time and you can check out my playlist on wedding planning growing up i didn't think it was important to plan for big expenses expenses like weddings having a baby vacation and if you know anything about living your best life in your 20s you really should try and travel because when life happens it becomes harder especially when your kids are still little if you don't adequately plan your expenses for vacations or major major things that you want to do in life you know starting a business i'm not just talking about f you know fun stuff it could be starting a business it could be buying a house or moving to a better apartment it could be buying a new phone or a gadget or maybe you want to start your youtube channel it could be buying a camera buying a microphone a ring light whatever it is you have to plan for these things because when you spontaneously do all these things you put yourself under a lot of pressure imagine Telling yourself okay i want to go for vacation this year and you use up all your money just to go for that vacation really on that vacation you're going to be thinking about how you're going to make more money rather than just enjoying yourself so that's why it's better to you know save a little bit of everything savings can seem so hard but what i've learned is that a little does go a long way if you feel like you need to save more to achieve more then you know you're going to have to do that sacrifice for a greater pleasure ahead now the sixth mistake i made was investing in unrealistic financial goals now what are you talking about vicky like <sighs> 
if you're in Nigeria and you know how many investment scams come up every single year every single year and i had my fair share of that in my early 20s not anymore and i mean not anymore i sympathize with you honestly from the depth of my heart if you're going through something like that or if you have gone through something like that because i know how it hurts in my case a friend had called me up then to say, oh, look at this investment opportunity. And to be honest and fair to him, he had also made a lot of money from this. That's the thing about all this get rich quick scam and investment, blah, blah, blah. Now, the thing is that some people will actually gain from it and a lot of people will lose from it. And I know how hard my heart was beating. If it was beating so loud, I couldn't hear the Holy Spirit saying, stop, don't do this. <laughs> but, you know, the greed was so high. The greed was high. And I, I did it. I did it. And seeing that debit alert, I never saw any credit alert. Two days later, they were telling me the platform is down. Three days later, one month later, one year later, a hundred years later, nothing has happened. I know we're going through so much. I know we're going through so much that sometimes these things can seem so enticing, but I would just say this, do your proper research. I'm not saying some of these things don't work. They may work, but just do your research before investing a lot of money into these things. These scams will never end. Just know this. It could come from a family member. It could come from, you know, it could come from someone who genuinely cares about you, who is telling you, you know, do this and this would happen. But I would say rather than doing this, maybe just this year, try investing in yourself, invest in skills, invest in multiplying your income. Which takes me to the next money mistake I made, which was not diversifying my income. When I left school, I started, um, I started doing makeup while I was in school. I started doing makeup while I was in school. So automatically, by the time I got out of school, I was still doing makeup. And I did makeup alone for a very long time. This put a lot of pressure on me and my business because I knew that this was the one source of my income. So every morning I wake up, that was the only thing I could think about. You know, I could only think about it and if you know anything about the makeup business it's quite a seasonal business it's a luxurious business it's, you know these are things that people can do without but want to do it for themselves just to feel good and over time as the economy drops you find out that um sometimes it's not it's not just a necessity to a lot of people because you know they cannot simply afford it or they just tend to afford it on special occasions and that was when i realized i needed to diversify my income and i tell you that's the best thing that has ever happened to me once you start multiplying your streams of income you start living a better life so i hope you learned a few things what streams of income are you working on what's your goal for your finances in this new year i'd love to hear what you think in the comments don't forget to subscribe give this video a like and share this video to your friends and family if you found it helpful and i'll see you in my next video bye